it's time for your sports faith game of the week. Here's Luke Crawl. He's going to line up a straight on three, and he splashed it. And an 8 0 run. Sherwood catch, fire left wing, and he drills the triple. Then pulled it back, and now Crawl has it left wing. Reitman steps into a top of the key jumper, and nothing but nylon. With the hip is good motion here. Sherwood just catch, fires, and fills it up from the right corner by Quimby. And now here's a pass intercepted. It's Haynes again. He stepped in front of Sherwood. He's going to go right at Sherwood. Oh, and Alex stopped him. Alex Sherwood with a big time block throw ahead. Haley lead feed layup right hand spinner's good. Now it's time to send it over to your host and play by play announcer, Craig Bone. Man, good evening, everybody, from Torchy Clark Gym here at Xavier High School as we just witnessed. The JV1 Xavier Hawk team run away and hide tonight. 70-41 was the final score there, but welcome into our North Star Dental Group pregame show as we get set for Bay Conference action as the Hawks get back on their home court for the first time in the new calendar year of 2024. Their last visit here, if you want to call it a visit, was a Green Bay West victory, 103-48 back on Thursday, December 21st. But welcome aboard. Craig Bone with you on Sports Faith YouTube. And these two hook up, and it's usually a battle. And it was earlier this year, a game that we had on Sports Faith YouTube. 57-50 was the final at Seymour back on Tuesday, December 5th. As the Hawks come in undefeated in the conference, 12 and one overall. Of course, their only loss, a setback down at Concordia University where they lost to Pius Catholic 65-48 was the final in that particular ball game. And for the Seymour Thunder, they come in playing very well. And uh, we'll talk about that in our pregame interview with coach Klarner but they are winners of six of the last seven and they were tied late in the ball game at West the Pier back on January 5th had a real chance to spring the upset right there but they do fall by six in that one the Thunder come in four and three in the conference and they are eight and five overall as the Hawks take the court first and the Seymour Thunder to our right. Great atmosphere, the Xavier Pep Band tuning things up here in our North Star Dental Group pregame show. Other action tonight in the Bay Conference, Manasha sitting at 500 in the conference. They are visiting Shano. Shano, the team that Xavier just beat on Friday night, 84-46 was the final in that one. Green Bay West is visiting New London. New London currently sitting in third place all alone in the Bay at four and two. And then West Appear visits the Red Devils of Green Bay East. And that is it for the Bay Conference action tonight. Xavier, they will play Menasha a week from tonight right here. We'll have it for you on Sports Faith YouTube. And then the big one, and it will be a big one. Thursday, February 1st, it'll be West of here coming into Torchy Clark as the Hawks will be looking to sweep out the Phantoms as they knocked off West of here earlier this year, 72-65. And we want to give a shout out to our fine sponsors once again as high school basketball brought to you by North Star Dental Group, locations in Appleton and in Sheboygan. And tonight's game also brought to you by OSMS, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialists of Green Bay and the Fox Cities, and by Let Me Be Frank Productions. Head on over to MeyerTheater.org for your show tickets today. And by Georgia Steakhouse. Since 1939, known for their award-winning steaks and, of course, their Friday fish fry. Give them a call today at 920-733-4939 for reservations. And by Cheryl Quimby Real Estate, Keller Williams Group of the Fox Cities. If you're looking to buy or sell your home, look no further than Cheryl Quimby with Keller Williams of the Fox Cities. 
The market still has a record low inventory. It is a great time to sell. Call Cheryl today, 920-224-3061, where she is committed to excellence. And by Card and Coin Corner, Packer City Antiques, owner, operator, and Xavier graduate, Mike Waracek. He buys and sells coins, gold and silver, sports cards, and Packer memorabilia. 2208 South Ridge Road in Green Bay. And by Feverly Management, the largest full-service commercial property management company north of Milwaukee, where they offer in-house services, including certified HVAC, electrical plumbing, building maintenance, lawn care, snow removal, pest control, security, janitorial, and project management. And by NAI Pfefferly, the commercial brokerage company that specializes in selling and leasing of commercial real estate. NAI Pfefferly has offices in Appleton, Green Bay, Wausau, and Sheboygan with 20 licensed real estate advisors. And by Kingpin Pizza, if you're looking for a school fundraiser, give them a call today at 920-265-1900. That is Kingpin Pizza. And by the Eshwaben on Bowling Lanes, Family Fun Center, 2929 Allied Street in Green Bay by Mr. Reinebo's Cookies since 2014, established by Matt Reinebo and Alan Amick. And by PRN, Home Health and Therapy, where they provide home health care and therapy services to patients throughout Wisconsin. They provide quality and compassionate care to all the patients they see, treating them like their own family. Visit PRNCares.com for more information. And by Forefront Dermatology, voted best in the valley four years in a row. Check them out for all your skin care needs. And by Gallagher's Pizza of Green Bay, De Pere, Alloway, and Suomico. And by the driveway, the basketball training center located at 1220 Flightway Drive, devoted to helping kids become the best version of themselves on and off the court through old school work ethic and new school methods. And by Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing, they can give you bottled water straight from the tap. No hot water, no problem. We can change out that water heater the same day. Clogged drains, leaky pipes, remodels. Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing has you covered. Best price, best service, best choice. And by the Xavier Booster Club, proud supporter of all Xavier High School sports teams and athletes, and they wish the Hawks good luck in tonight's game, and go Hawks from our newest Xavier sponsor, the Xavier Booster Club. Let's step aside at our North Star Dental Group pregame show, and when we come back, we're going to hear from the head man. It'll be Matt Clarner. We'll have that after this timeout. First, a message from North Star Dental Group, Appleton and Sheboygan. Back with more. You're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Wait, how many times do I have to come back? First no foul, too many appointments. You should have gone to North Star Dental. Dr. Pete and his team have experience and with today's technology can do more dentistry in just one visit. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental. And dental implants should last a lifetime. Whether you need a single tooth replacement or a full mouth reconstruction, you can get it all done here under one roof. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. And it's time to welcome in Coach Klarner to our North Star Dental Group pregame show as we get back at it. Bay Conference action tonight, Seymour and Xavier. Uh, welcome in, Coach. A very impressive win over Shano. And interestingly enough, you guys almost had 14 days off without a basketball game. Yeah, it was a long break, uh, longer probably than any of us wanted. But, um, you know, I guess you kind of got to take the good and the bad with that. And at the end of the day, the guys came out, played probably, you know, maybe a little bit more crisp in the first half than we expected. And as the game went on, really started playing, playing uh, better offensively, defensively. It was really a complete team effort great to get a lot of guys some playing time too in that second half and, and get some experience so it was it was a great day for us in general yeah it's one of the things I kind of noted to myself when I was looking at the statistics after that game 34 of 56 from the field yeah that's shooting it pretty well but the balance and scoring incredible as it was just a hodgepodge of guys crawl with nine Brightman eight Pfefferly seven uh, Isaiah Desjardins who's having a very nice season 10 points for his season high, three of three shooting, you get eight out of Reed Hippus, another double digit 10 out of Quimby. So some outstanding balance. Uh, let's talk about that 13 day break. 
anything change as far as practice went? Did you work on maybe some things that you normally wouldn't work on? I mean, that's a long time without playing a game. And do you think that 13 day break could be advantageous as we move down the home stretch? You get a nice little rest there. The guys are fresh and, and healthy. Well, I think we are fresh. I think that's, that's true for sure. I think uh, it'd be a little different if you knew that it was going to be a 13 day break, you would definitely treat it differently. But what happens is you go into practice Monday expecting to play Tuesday and then you leave and you find out, Oh, actually there is no game Tuesday. And then you come back Wednesday preparing for a game on Friday and it, all of a sudden you come in Thursday and you practice and then you find out there is no game on Friday. So, you know, if we would have known we would have had the week off, it would have been much, much different. We would have been able to break down some things and work on some specific things and, and really use that time productively. But really we were preparing for games that just never happened. So in, in some ways you could say that that, you know, maybe wasn't the most productive use of our time, but you can't control the weather. You can't control the schedules and it's just kind of the way that it all fell. So in general, I would say though, a chance to go back and work on some fundamentals uh, last week and a chance to get back to some, you know, stuff that you normally do in November and December. You know, I felt good about the way the guys practiced. I thought their energy level was high. I thought they stayed focused. There was one or two days where we were doing some live action where you could just tell that the guys were a little chippy with each other, you know, and, and it got a little physical. And I think that was just because they're uh, looking forward to playing somebody else other than themselves, obviously. So I think there was probably a little bit of that too. But in, in general, it was, it, was, it was intense. It was focused. Uh, the guys continue to build. We continue to get better. So I'm very proud of, of the, the work ethic there and, and the leadership we have on the team. Yeah, and great to be back at Torchy Clark. You guys have not been at home in the new year. Five games consecutive on the road, and now you get four in a row at home. So an important stretch here, obviously, Seymour, Menasha, West of Pier. We're going to have all three of those on Sports Faith YouTube. Obviously, that West of Pier game down the road looming large. But uh, talk about the challenge of, of this next three games and really, obviously, the importance of it. you got a half-game lead right now in the Bay Conference. We're kind of in the dog days of winter, if you will, you know, the dog days of summer during the baseball season. This is almost kind of the dog days of winter in a basketball season. You see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you got to try to get there now and win yourself another Bay Conference title. Yeah, I obviously some great battles ahead. Obviously, starting tonight, we're going to have a great battle and a great test. It's going to be a fun basketball game. And, uh, you know, I think that's what you play for. You play for to, to get to these big opportunities and these big games in the last month of the season. And that's kind of where we are. We're kind of hitting that last month of the season. And I feel like we put ourselves in a good position, obviously. Putting yourself in a good position, just now you got to go out and capitalize on the opportunities that are ahead of you. So we know there's some big tests ahead. We know that Seymour is playing really, really well right now. We know that other teams are gaining experience and playing well right now. We know there's going to be a bunch of tough battles here in the next month. And, and I think our guys are, are excited about it and looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, Seymour, six of their last seven, their only loss, a six-point setback at West Pier uh, over these last seven games. So they are indeed playing good. Uh, in that first game, let's talk about it. 57-50, Seymour got you in the type of game that they like. They want to play in the 50s, uh, but you guys prevail. Reed Hippus, huge, 14 points, five rebounds, a couple of assists in that game, and then Quimby and Pfefferly with a dozen each. Talk about the Seymour team. I know... Isaac Feske, big body inside, Kyler Marks as well. They got some good young size. This is going to be one of the better teams in the Bay Conference moving forward because of the age of their roster being what it is. Yeah, Seymour's got a couple of really nice young post players, and they're really playing well. They, you know, I think at the beginning of the season, they played well against us, and I think you just watch them on film now, and they're gaining confidence and, and playing better. So they're really tough around the basket, very physical, and that, that will pose a challenge for our interior defense for sure. You know, Seymour always has a couple kids that can knock down three pointers too. So you got to worry about that. So there's, they're, they're going to get you on both ends here and uh, we got to be ready to go. I felt like in that first game, we played really well in the first half. And then that first five or six minutes, the second half, they kind of lulled us to sleep a little bit, had some longer possessions, hit a couple shots. We had a couple turnovers and obviously, you know, the game became very close. So, you know, we, we have to be consistent with our offensive and defensive possessions and I think that's something that we are doing pretty well right now. But uh, obviously, you know, going against a physical, tough Seymour team that's playing well obviously poses a new challenge. Xavier Salzman, the sophomore, had 16 points in that game, the first meeting, 12 out of marks, along with 11 rebounds. And then Feske, he had an 11.11 11 rebound game. And then you throw in Kinu Shanana, 11 points. So only four guys scored in that game. But talk about how important it's going to be to block out this evening. I mean, those guys had double digits and rebounds. You got to keep them off the glass somehow. 
yeah, I believe we've won the rebounding battle 11 out of 13 times out this year. And that was, uh, you know, that's something we pride ourselves on. That's something we take a ton of, put a ton of effort in towards and, and ton of focus towards. Uh, but that was a night where they did get us on the boards. They got a couple offensive boards against us for sure. And they made us pay when we made mistakes. So I feel like that will definitely be a focus point. It was a focus point the last two days in practice to get ourselves ready for this. And hopefully our guys will rise up to the challenge. But we do not want to see both their posts and double-digit rebounds tonight for sure. Yep, that'll be a key to the ball game tonight and should be a fun one. So thanks again, Coach. Good luck tonight. Stay healthy. Get yourself a Bay Conference win. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. All right, Head Coach Matt Klarner of the Xavier Hawks joining us on the North Star Dental Group pregame show. And when we come back, we'll have starting lineups. And tonight's tip, it is Seymour and Xavier in the Bay Conference here from Torchy Clark Gymnasium as you watch Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Who would you rather face? A 240-pound football player running at you full speed? Or a dentist? Let Dr. Pete and the team at North Star Dental make your experience worry-free. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental Group, and our patient's safety and comfort come first. That's why we offer sedation dentistry. No stress, no worries. Go home with that beautiful smile, usually in just one visit. If you think that's too good to be true, give us a call. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. And we want to thank head coach Matt Klarner for joining us on the North Star Dental Group pregame show. And we talked about their size. The Seymour Thunder come in with a couple of big boys, Isaac Feske and Kyler Marks, both with 11 rebounds and double doubles the last, two, the last time these two teams met. So a big time challenge tonight as we talked about blocking out and how important that's going to be. As the Xavier fight song has the crowd up and standing. Great atmosphere here in Torchy Clark Gym tonight. Should be a very entertaining ball game as you see the Xavier Hawks warming up to our left. Tyler Brightman going to be huge tonight. Second in the Bay Conference in rebounds and in field goal percentage, averaging 14 and a half, almost nine rebounds. As the Hawks, only one game they've played in a little over two weeks. They had almost a 14 day break that me and Matt Klarner talked about in the pregame show. As both teams come to the respective sidelines. Bobby Kukta, of course, in his fourth year, taking over for John Murphy. John, of course, in his third year at Kimberly, Matt Klarner in his 13th year. Time for our national anthem.
And the Xavier Pep Band with our national anthem. And the Thunder are going to be in their dark road jerseys, red trim, red numerals. They will be introduced first. Seymour coming in 8 and 5 overall, 4 and 3 in the Bay Conference. They were 12 and 14 a year ago and a 500 even 7 and 7 in the Bay Conference a year ago. Seymour, like I mentioned, coached by Bobby Cook to Kyler Marks and Isaac Feske in the front court. And Devin Oregon's going to get a start, the senior, and it's going to be Xavier Salzman and Kinu Shanana in the backcourt for the Thunder. And now the home team, the Hawks, with the lights turned on, they're going to get introduced. to this good sized crowd here this evening and actually correction on the starting lineups it will be Ethan Voltz the senior not Devin Oregon so that senior Devin Oregon he'll come off the bench Seymour not nearly as deep as the Xavier Hawk team we'll see a rotation of potentially 10 guys tonight Seymour really will not go much deeper than probably seven or eight at the most, so the Hawks have an opportunity here to try to wear down the Thunder early, and it'll be Sam Pfefferly getting his 14th, or excuse me, 13th start of the season. Almost 11 points a game, leads the Hawks in assist at 6.2, and it'll be Hayden Quimby. It'll be his 13th start, averaging 13 points, a 50% shooter. And it'll be Reed Hippus, the six-foot senior, and he'll get his sixth start of the year. And it'll be another senior, Luke Kroll, six-foot-three, third in the Bay Conference in assist. He has started every game, all 14 this will be, and it'll be Tyler Brightman, 14 and a half points per game. Coming off an 8.10 rebound game versus Shano the other night. And he only scored two the first time these two teams met. So we expect him to have a much better scoring game this evening. But Isaac Feske and Kyler Marks will no doubt present a challenge this evening in what is always a battle. If Seymour can keep it in the 50s, they got a chance. If it gets into the 60s or higher, Big advantage to the Hawks as the Thunder tipped it back and it went out of bounds and it'll be Xavier Hawk basketball on the sideline. Hawks in their home white, navy blue, silver trim. The silver numerals going right to left on our YouTube stream tonight. Glad you could join us. Fifthful, he just got powered up over Shanana and he's not able to convert. As Kinu Shanana held his ground, the 5'10 senior. So Pfefferly, a good look, not able to convert. So now Xavier in that all aggressive man to man and Fesky gives up his dribble in a little bit of trouble, now Marks. Here's Salzman, good looking player, had 16 points the last time these two teams met. He had four rebounds and a couple of assists as well. Seymour been playing very well, starting to shoot the ball a little bit better. They only average 52 points per game. Xavier, they want to get things high energy on offense. They average 76. So far, Xavier digging in defensively. Seymour trying to find any kind of opening. Marks finds an opening, and the long three is wide right and deep. Here comes Sam. They want to run. 
Sam's going to pull it back out now. Inside feed. What a pocket pass to Hippus. That ball was blocked by Feske. Got it back and he got bumped. What a pass by Pfefferly as Hippus had to earn that one. And Isaac Feske is going to pick up his first. Reed Hippus getting his sixth start of the season. So Reed to the line for a pair, and he rolls the first one up and good. A 63% foul shooter coming in. Eight points against Shauna the other night, but what a game against Seymour. Back on December 5th, 14 points, five rebounds, two assists. He was five out of seven from the field as he splits a pair there, and it's one nothing early on. The Xavier Hawks on their home court where they're very difficult to beat. Luke Kroll putting the heat on Kinu Shanana out on the perimeter. Some unbelievable ball pressure. Now Marks, he's squaring up against Brightman. Marks, good help there by Kroll. Great hedge help. Then he got back to his man. Now Feske is going to power into the lane. Ball tipped and stolen by Fairfield. He's got a two-on-one. Sam going to go right to the rim, lay it up, and he got hit on the arm. Sam Pfefferly with the steal in the coast to coast. And that's how Xavier wants to go tonight and every night is get up and down as Ethan Volt. Voles picks up his first team foul number two. And back to the line, the Xavier Hawks go. And so far, one for three start. Sam's free throw percentage has dipped a little bit. He's down to 68%. And he's up and he rattles the second in, and it's 2-0 Hawks. Glad you could join us. If you haven't subscribed to Sports Faith YouTube, please do so. And now Xavier going to pick up with some zone pressure. They're able to break it. Seymour has, and Marks almost dragged his pivot foot, finds Fesky inside for the layup. Good luck by Kyler Marks, and we're not at a two. Xavier hit him with a little zone pressure that time, but over the top they went. And Marks made a good pass into Feske. Don't anticipate a whole lot of other than man-to-man -man defense out of both of these teams. Brightman right of the lane, goes up and under, tried to shoot it over Marks, and he was distracted and he came up short on the window. This is what Seymour will do. They'll get into you defensively. Both these teams play very good defense. And now Pfefferly reaching in on Voles. No foul. Voles able to get around. Hook pass at the Salzman. Wide left. Barely drew iron. And here comes Pfefferly. Look ahead. He found Reed Hippes. Layup. He got it. Nice look by Pfefferly finding Hippes again. Reed with three early points. And now Xavier going to pick up full court. And they're going to trap. He knew Shanana better. Hurry, it's getting close, and there's a 10. I was going to say I had a 10-second clock in my head, sort of. And sure enough, turnover Seymour on the 10-second violation. And that's what the Hawks will do. They'll hit some zone pressure on you, full court. They trap that ball. It causes all kinds of problems. So now the Hawks up too. Sam driving hard, spinning, whirling Dervish. Shot it too hard, back heel. Sam Pfefferly with a beautiful one-on-one -on -one spin. Now Voles crosses over on Pfefferly, pull up 12 footer and he made it. Beautiful pull up jumper by Ethan Voles. He averages seven, has a season high 13 against Freedom earlier this year. Reed's gonna step into a bomb and he bottomed it out. Reed Hippus off to a start. He's got six. We talked to him earlier this year about his shooting and how much more of an offensive threat he is. And now Kinu Shanana in trouble again. Feske has it. They better go in a hurry or get a timeout, and they got to get one. Oh, they're going to get a 10-second instead. Bobby Cook had tried to get a timeout, but it was too late. And back-to-back 10-second -back violations. You don't see it that often. But the Thunder just turned it over as they're having all kinds of problems with this full court pressure. 10 turnovers a game, Seymour averages. And they turn it over 18 times 
the last time these two teams met. Luke Kroll is going to try his luck. Left wing three is no good long. And Kyler Marks with the rebound. Pretty good start here. Physical game. We expected it. Two defenses digging in hard. You get the 55 tonight. That might be enough. This game could very easily be in the mid-50s. Fesky backing down on Hippus. Good help. Cheat help by Quimby. Salzman with a drive and a hook pass into the corner. Fesky air balls it from the right pocket. Luke Kroll, he tried to save it, and they're going to say it went out of bounds off of Seymour. And we have first substitutions. Looks like Bobby Kukta thought that ball went off the foot of a hawk. And now the officials to our right are talking about it. And I thought for sure that was going to stay Seymour basketball, so let's see if they reverse it. They are not. They're going to keep it hawk ball as Luke Olhafen has checked in along with Logan Ramchek, the freshman. Carson Johnson, a sophomore, six-footer, checks in for Seymour. Hawks up by three early on. Olhafen going to use his size. Oh, heartbreak off the edge of the rim as he went up over Carter Johnson, or Carson Johnson, excuse me. And a couple of good looks by Xavier early on in the paint have not fallen. Carson Johnson, a left-handed ball player. He's been getting some more minutes, and Olhafen all over him, almost getting a five-second call. Marks thought about trying his second three, doesn't. Kinu Shinana comes off that mark screen. Ethan Voles has a jump shot in this game from the baseline that went. Good ball movement. Voles going to try the right corner three. No. And Brightman rips down his first rebound of the ball game. Here comes Quimby with his head up. Hayden behind the back. Crossover. Oh, and he got pickpocketed. Ethan Voles stole it. Now Marks picked from behind. Logan Ramchick, the freshman. Not only did he steal it, he was able to save it from going out of bounds. So back-to-back -back turnovers by each team. But what a hustle play by the freshman Ramchick. Now Crow with a snap inside. Ramp check, turn with the right hand, bank it up from three feet up and good. Logan Ramchek with his first deuce. He's averaging just under seven. And Xavier with their largest lead of the game. And that ball is air mailed by Xavier Salzman over the top of Kyler Marks. And all of a sudden, it's four early turnovers for the Thunder as Hayden Quimby comes out. And Cole Hippus is going to get some time. The 6'2 junior, I didn't mention Joe Gallucci, he is out of this ball game. He's got an ankle injury, going to probably keep him out another week. It's a two-week injury. He's a week in. So we're going to see Cole Hippus, and they're going to use Cole's size, 6'2". He'll get down there and bang around with Kyler Marks and company. Ramp check and a back cut, and Crawl found him. Luke Kroll having a great year, third in the Bay Conference in assists. And the Hawks up seven as the Thunder break the pressure. Two on one. Johnson overlaid it with the left hand. And here come the Hawks on the push. Early momentum here for Xavier. Kroll wants to use an Olhafen screen. Instead gives it in the corner. Can Ramchek do it? No, he rimmed off a three. Olhafen falling to the ground. No. Cole Hippus goes up and he got hit. And Cole Hipp is crashing the glass, as is Luke Olhafen. And that's why we're going to see a lot of Cole Hippis tonight. Only averages about eight minutes a game, Cole, but he'll get plenty tonight because they're going to need his size in there. And Hippis to the free throw line. And that is way short on the first. He'll get a second. Sam Geiso into the ball game for the Thunder. And Isaac Fesky back. It'll be Marks and Salzman going to take a break. Isaiah Disjardins into the game. Coming off a season high 10 against Shano on three for three shooting. And Cole Hippis got a shooter's bounce. And it's 12 4 Hawks. See if Xavier traps out of this. They have been. It's man to man right now. Now they're going to jump trap. Here comes Pfefferly helping out this Jardins. Johnson's in trouble. 
That ball needs to get across half court, and it just did it. It results in a three-on-one. Feske got hit and won. Seymour just barely broke the 10-second call again. And Feske is going to get a two and a harm. And the foul is on Cole Hippus. Seymour, they break that pressure. They had three on one. And if they can make Xavier pay for that pressure, that's how they can get back in. As the Thunder Trail 12 7. Seven and a half minutes gone by. Glad you could join us on Sports Faith YouTube. Just Jarns lines up a three and he got nothing but nylon. He's hit his last four field goals carrying over from the Shano game. Dangerous pass to Johnson. Ole Hafen almost intercepted it. Hawks back up eight. Here's Sam Geiso out to Shanana. Good looking three ball and he got it. Seymour is starting to shoot the ball much better talking with Coach Kukta before the game. It's one area they're improving on. Oh, Hafen trying to answer and it's short. Battle for the rebound. Just Jardins digs it out of there for the Hawks. What a hustle play by Isaiah Dis Jardins. Really having a nice campaign this year, his senior year. Cole Hippes, deep right on the three. Battle for the rebound. I think they're going to get somebody over the back or into the back. Oh, they're going to get Ole Hafen, I believe, with a push in the back. And it is on Luke, his first. Team foul number two on the Hawks as Cole Hippus comes out. Tyler Brightman in. And Colton Neeland, who actually had checked into the ball game, and Carson Johnson are checking out. Salzman back into the game. And now here's a ball errantly thrown and then thrown right back away by Fefferly. Back-to-back turnovers. Three on the way, and it's good again. Xavier Salzman with his first triple. I mentioned him earlier. He had 16 in the first meeting. He was 6 out of 15 in that ball game. Now Luke Olhafen with a rainbow. And the uh, shooting in the torch is heating up. Xavier back up five. Fesky being ridden by Olhafen. Isaac in trouble. Good defense. That's got to be a five, is it? Oh, they're going to get a timeout. Oh, that was getting dangerously close to a five-second call, but Bobby Kukta got a timeout. And it's hot and heavy early. 8.46 remaining on the OSMS scoreboard. 18-13 Xavier as you're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Festival Foods and Diamonds of Gold present, let me be frank, Silver Jubilee season at the Meyer Theater. And our first show of the year is Two and a Half Belgians, Friday, February 2nd to February 27th. Join me, Two and a Half, and my other brothers, Run True Five, as we work at the Frosty Tip in Dykesville and cruise for Illinois babes in Fish Creek. It's the late 60s. Herky and Mabel are the proprietors of Frosty Tip. Two and a Half Belgians runs February 2nd to February 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTeater.org or call 494-3401. And we're back at Xavier High School, Torchy Clark Gym, and it is hot and heated early in this Bay Conference matchup. Some good shooting early on. The three ball starting the fall. Seymour's got a couple. Xavier's got a couple, actually three to be exact. Reed Hippus off to a good start. He's got six. Seymour struggling against some of this pressure that Xavier is implementing, and there's a throwaway. Salzman was trying to find Fesky, and he threw it right to Reed Hippus. And now Fefferly almost gets his pocket picked and they're gonna get a reach in on Xavier Salzman. That'll be his first. A little bit of sloppiness on both sides early on in this ball game as Disjardins comes out, solid minutes out of him. Luke Crawl back in. Ethan Voles back in for the Thunder as well. Hawks led by as many as eight. Quimby with his first attempt, that was wide left. Brightman offensive rebound, throw it back up with the left hand and he overlaid it. Great offensive rebound by Brightman, but he couldn't finish. Second in the Bay Conference in rebounding, sixth in scoring for Brightman. Three ball is good and Xavier Salzman starting to heat up. 
He's got a pair of threes, and just like that, it's a two-point ball game. That's a good-looking sophomore. Now Quimby fakes the three, gets to the lane, floating left-handed layup. Great patience by Aiden Quimby. Quimby, he's so dangerous from deep that when he fakes that shot, it gets the defender off his feet. And Quimby took advantage and got to the rim. Oh, beautiful look. Salzman to a wide open. Kyler Marks. Xavier Salzman doing a little bit of everything in this ball game. Averages three assists, four rebounds, almost eight points a game. So Salzman a little bit of everything for the sophomore. Xavier up two. Sam dribbled it off his foot. Scramble for the ball, turned over, Marks has it, and he throws it to Shanana. Shanana, ball deflected, goes off the rim. He was trying to find Salzman. And Brightman the other way, reverse with the right hand, a tough shot, and it fell short. Good action here from the torch tonight. If you like high tempo basketball, this game's probably a little quicker than what Seymour would like. Salzman with a tough pass to Marks. Now Vols wide open for the lead. No. Ball tipped. And it's Salzman tipping at the Marks. Xavier Salzman has just been phenomenal in a lot of different areas early in this basketball game. He has six so far. A couple of threes. Marks goes over Brightman. Left it short. Brightman might have got a piece. Now Luke Kroll. Bounce it. Hippus got around his defender. Missed it, but he got hacked. What a quick spin move off of Isaac Feske that time by Reed Hippus. And Feske just picked up number two, and Hippus will go back to the line for his third and fourth attempts. Good start to this one. 12 minutes, not quite in. As Reed up and good with the first. He's got seven early points. Logan Ramchek's going to come in. Sam Pfefferly, I think, a little frustrated early on here after he dribbled that ball off his foot. This Xavier team, the way they play, they don't turn it over a lot. A little over eight turnovers per game as Hippus splits another pair. So he's two for four on the evening. And if you're Bobby Cookton and the Thunder, you're pretty happy. 21-18 in a very tough environment. As Vols drives, he's pickpocketed from behind by Quimby. Here's a four on two rush. Hippus, feed Quimby, right handed layup good. Four on two gold rush, and Hippus made the right decision. Reed Hippus with a good feed that time. And the Hawks back up five. Vols, hook pass. Johnson, left handed three, too hard for Carson Johnson, but Vols has the rebound. Hits a backdoor cutting Shanana back out the Vols. Three on the way is short. No. And here come the Hawks with numbers. Three on two. Hippus power it up with the right hand in transition. And Bobby Cook that says, I need a timeout. As the Hawks with a little momentum, a little 4 0 run, mini run. A 30 second timeout on the OSMS scoreboard. 25 18. Xavier, back with more. You're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. You're faced with a tough healthcare decision. You've been given a diagnosis and treatment options, but you're still not comfortable with the plan. It may be time to get another opinion. I'm Dr. Jason Klein, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. No matter what you're questioning, a second opinion can give you peace of mind. OSMS is doctor owned and patient focused, and we're here to help you understand your options so you can stay in charge of your health. Learn more at askforosms.com. Twenty-five, eighteen, Xavier, and we got some rapid-fire basketball. Fifty-seven, fifty. The last time these two teams met, Xavier won. This game has a little bit different feel to it. It's way more up tempo than I think Seymour wants. And now a three-on-one. Marks faked the pass, and he lays it up and in. That was a beautiful press break right there by the Thunder. It resulted in a three-and-one layup. As Kyler Marks converts out of that timeout. Quimby wanted to pull the trigger, but Salzman right there. Luke Kroll trying to work on Carson Johnson, finds a backdoor cutting. Oh, Reed Hippus missed it. Tried to tip up his own, got it back, and the third time he gets whacked. And we've seen Xavier not finishing tonight early on in this ball game. 
Carson Johnson gets called. Team foul number six on the Thunder. And Reed Hippis, one miss, then tried to tip it back in. And then on the third attempt, he earns two more free throws as that's attempt number five, and he's two for five. Luke Olhafen back in for Tyler Brightman. So Reed Hippis, this will be his sixth free throw attempt of the ball game. 63% shooter coming in, and that one's good. And they're going to wave it because the Xavier Hawk fell in early, and I think it was Luke Olhafen. Luke lost his balance. I believe it was Olhafen. No, they're going to say Disjardins lost his balance, and he fell in to the lane, so wipe off the free throw. So Reed Hippus technically two for six, really three for six, but that one does not count. And now the Thunder into the front court. Here's Marks. Tough pass into Johnson. Kinu Shanana, 5'10 senior, fifth in the Bay Conference in assists. Now Marks, Reed Hippus all over him. There's a white shirt on a black shirt everywhere you look, and they close out like no other. There's another one right there, Hippus all over Marks. Yeah, Isaiah Disjardins, who's back in here. Boy, this defense, my goodness. Hippus now guarding Marks. Marks is going to set a ball screen for Shanana. And this is what you see out of Seymour quite a bit. Long possessions. Johnson with a nice cross court find. Xavier Salzman, no on the three. And here comes Disjardins on the run. Isaiah will give it to Luke Kroll. Luke going to ask for a ball screen from Hippus. He has it, now kick Quimby. Parking lot three, right corner pocket, no. And Carson Johnson clears the glass. Into the front court, Kyler Marks. Inside pass, oh, and they're going to get Disjardin. It looked like a good reach over, but, or did they get Olhafen? Let's see. I think they got Isaiah on the reach over, I thought. And it is. That's only team foul number three as Brightman and Pfefferly going to come back in. It'll be Crawl and Reed Hippus coming out. Xavier Salzman will go out. Ethan Voles back in. Carson Johnson, we did not see him in the first game, but getting some minutes here. He's played in 11 games, actually. Kyler Marks tried to reverse it up, and Brightman was there to distract it. And now Sam's going to turn it over. Sam got it hung up on his hip, a little unforced turnover. So both of these teams, they have not been crisp at times, been a little bit sloppy. And Seymour on the road, down five. These two teams battle. It's always a good basketball game. Xavier's gotten the best of Seymour in recent years, but it's always a battle. Carson Johnson wants to set a ball screen for Voles. Now it's Kinu Shinana. He gets it knocked away and stolen by Isaiah Disjardins. Isaiah to the rim, float, right-handed layup good. Isaiah Disjardins with a beautiful steal and hoop. He's got five, and it's a seven-point lead. Xavier, and now it's a travel. Carson Johnson absolutely dragged his pivot foot. And that's what happens when you get sped up when maybe you don't want to. Colton Neeland and Xavier Salzman back in. Johnson will take a seat. As will Fesky. Sam with a baseline drive and a tough pass. He was trying to get it to Olhaf. Unfortunately, it went off of a Thunder player. And the Hawks will keep it. Baseline left. 2.45 left here in a quick moving first half. Hawks led by as many as eight. Up seven. Sam up to Quimby. Let's see what Xavier does here if they want to try to get the ball inside to Brightman. Here's Brightman on the perimeter. He finds a cutting wide open Sam Pfefferly and he laid it in with the left hand. A beautiful high low game right there. Normally it's the other way around. Brightman the recipient. This time it was Tyler with the beautiful throw down to Pfefferly. 
Nealon having trouble. Salzman almost threw it away. He got it over the top of Brightman, and now Marks is going to get fouled. That pass by Salzman almost was tipped by Brightman, and then Pfefferly is going to save a layup. That's a good foul right there. Make Kyler Marks go to the free throw line and earn it. He is a 71% free throw shooter. Kyler Marks, 12 points, 11 rebounds the last time these two met, and that one rolls off. So Sam Pfefferly saves a point at least as Disturns will take a seat. And Luke Kroll back in for Matt Klarner. Hawks lead by nine, their largest of the game. And Kyler Marks trying to split a pair of free throws, and he does. Marks with five. 29-21 Hawks. Quimby has it. Kroll cutting to the basket. Now they're going to try to post him up, but they can't. So now Hayden. Send it right side, Brightman. Tyler, gonna give it to Pfefferly. They were trying to do a little flare action off of a screen. Constant motion, these guys. Xavier, very good structured offense they run. Luke Olhafen with a little shot fake, rumbling down the alley, and he's gonna get fouled by Salzman. The Seymour faithful were looking for a travel or maybe a clean block, and they got neither. So back to the line as the Hawks are spending a lot of time at the line. They have 10 attempts from the charity stripe already. Unfortunately, they've only made four and now make it five. Sam Geiso into the ball game for the Thunder and Salzman is Going to take a seat. They're going to protect him with two. Isaac Feske, he's been on the bench for a number of minutes. He has two falls as well. So Bobby Kukta trying to protect two of his top players. Luke Olhafen trying to make it a double-digit game for the first time, and he does. And Luke is going to come off and read Hippus back in with a minute 42 remaining. And the Hawks lead by 10. Carson Johnson back. And it's going to be Colton Nealon going to take a seat. And now Xavier going to pick up full court. We've seen Seymour struggling in this area against pressure. Kyler Marks is going to left-hand dribble across half court. Close to carrying the basketball. Here's Johnson now. Gets the return feed from Kinu Shanana. And Marks going to line up a straight on three. And he got nothing but bottoms. No hesitation there. He's got eight points. He's a 31% three-point shooter coming in. Reed Hippus going to try to answer and it back rims. No good. And now Seymour going to try to cut into this seven-point lead as we tick down near a minute. Good ball game here tonight in the Bay. And here's an overplay and almost a steal by Hippus. Johnson's able to find Geiso for the three. No, and a big-time block out by Brightman. Tyler Brightman snatches it out of the air. Pfefferly over to Kroll. Down to 45 seconds. Here's a tough feed. Knocked away by Marks, but it went right to Kroll. Luke, hesitate, nice look. Bounce feed inside, pump fake Quimby. And the ball was blocked. And I believe it was Carson Johnson that got a piece. Great interior defense that time by Carson Johnson. Some great ball movement and a good look inside to Quimby from Luke Crowell, but they can't convert. And now Seymour gonna hold for one. We're down to 16 seconds remaining. Xavier up seven, led by as many as 10. Kinu Shanana, we're down to seven, six. Vols inside, Mark Scott loose. Pump fake, throw it up, no. Battle for the board, Quimby has it. And he will heave it up high. It hits the ceiling, and that is the end of that first half as Kyler Marks had a really good look as Bobby Cook to call in for a foul. He thought Kyler Marks got hit on the elbow, but no whistle, and we go to the half on the OSMS scoreboard, and it was a fun half. 31-24 is your score at the half. Xavier over Seymour. Back with more. We'll take a look at halftime statistics 
and all that and then some when we come back. You're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Located in Ashwaubenon, just south of Green Bay, our 60 Lane Bowling Center is your home for family fun and entertainment in Northeast Wisconsin. With 60 lanes to choose from, we offer open bowling at day and cosmic by night. Our center also features a brand new interactive way to approach the game, Unreal Bowling. Get more involved with the community by joining one of our leagues And for our younger bowlers, join our youth bowling program where you can receive one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're looking for a place to host your next special event, the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley has two different banquet rooms that can accommodate large groups upwards of 250 people or comfortably seat 80 people. Come for the bowling, stay for the food. Our Field House Bar and Grill is home to delicious drinks, pizza, sandwiches, and so much more. The Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley is the place to make lasting memories with family and friends. For more information, visit us at ashbowl.com or by calling us at 920-336-0400. hunger strikes, you need to act fast or you could die. So keep a healthy supply of Kingpin pizzas in your freezer and you'll always be just 12 minutes away from deliciousness. Kingpin pizza, it's good. Your health care should be about what's best for you. Yet too often, healthcare professionals focus on keeping patients within their system, including who they refer you to. I'm Dr. Will Elburo, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. You should be seen by who you want. And you can be. At OSMS, our focus is on providing you with the highest quality of care in a safe environment. The best part is, you usually don't need a referral for orthopedic care, putting full control in your hands. Learn more at askforosms.com. Hungry? Check out this deal on the best pizza in Wisconsin. I love this pizza. And you'll love getting $5 off any Gallagher's pizza order of 30 or more. Call us for delivery. It's the best way to feed your office for lunch. Best for Foods and Diamonds and Gold present Let Me Be Frank's Silver Jubilee season at the Meyer Theater. And our first show of the year is Two and a Half Belgians, Friday, February 2nd through February 27th. Join me, Two and a Half, and my other brothers, Run True Five, as we work at the Frosty Tip in Dykesville and cruise for Illinois babes in Fish Creek. It's the late 60s. Herky and Mabel are the, the proprietors of Frosty Tip. Two and a Half Belgians runs February 2nd through February 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTeater.org or call 494-3401. And welcome back to the Torch, Torchy Clark Gymnasium. As we are at the half on the OSMS scoreboard, 31-24. The Xavier Hawks lead, they led by as many as 10. And let's take a look at first half statistics. And the Seymour Thunder, they come in averaging 52. And they're just a hair below that at the break. Kyler Marks, he finished the half with eight points to go along with three rebounds. He does have one three-point bucket. And Xavier Salzman finishes the first half with six points and one rebound in that first half. Five from Isaac Feske, who was in foul trouble most of that first half. Three points from Kinu Shanana. And rounding out their scoring, Ethan Voles with a total of two points. For the Thunder, the Thunder knocked down four three-pointers. They were two for three from the charity stripe. 
And from the three-point line, Seymour only four of 13 in this first half. And for the Xavier Hawks, some more great balance. It was Reed Hippus who got off to the great start. He was pounding the offensive glass. And he finishes the first half with nine points. And he also had three rebounds in that first half as well. Unofficially, five points from Luke Olhafen. Five from Isaiah Disjardins. Couple of rebounds for Disjardins as well. Four points from the freshman Logan Ramchek. And four from Hayden Quimby. Three points from Sam Pfefferly in that first half. And a single free throw from Cole Hippus. And the Hawks able to get to the line 12 times in that first half, but they were only able to make six, so they have left six points on the board from the charity stripe. And the Hawks did knock down three point baskets, three of them out of their nine attempts. So 33% for the Hawks, a team that comes in shooting at 38% from beyond the arc. So that is the way it looked from a statistical standpoint in the first half. And a great shout out once again to our great sponsors, North Star Dental Group, Appleton and Sheboygan, and OSMS, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialists of Green Bay and the Fox Cities. Tonight's game brought to you by Let Me Be Frank Productions. Head over to MeyerTheater.org for your show tickets today and by Georgia Steakhouse since 1939. Owned and operated by the Quimby family since 1976. Dinner served Monday through Saturday at 4.30. Famous for their award-winning steaks. But don't forget, Georgia's also serves a tempting array of seafood, chicken, ribs, and other supper club favorites. And of course, their Friday fish fry Call 920-733-4939 for reservations. And by Cheryl Quimby Real Estate, Keller Williams Group of the Fox Cities. If you're looking to buy or sell your home, look no further than Cheryl Quimby with Keller Williams of the Fox Cities. The market still has a record low inventory. It's a great time to sell. Call Cheryl today, 920-224-3061, where she is committed to excellence. And by Card Point Corner, Packard City Antiques. Owner, operator, and Xavier graduate, Mike Waracek. Give him a call today, 920-498-0050. Located five blocks from Lambeau Field, 2208 South Ridge Road. And by Pfefferly Management, the full service commercial property management company, largest full service commercial property management company north of Milwaukee where they handle all aspects of property management, including lease administration, rent collection, facilities management, preventative maintenance, and bill paying. And by NAI Pfefferly, the commercial brokerage company that specializes in selling and leasing of commercial real estate, NAI Pfefferly, an affiliate of NAI Global, which is the largest network of owner-operated commercial real estate firms in the world. Call their Appleton offices today for more information, 920-968-4700. And by Kingpin Pizza, if you're looking for a school fundraiser, look no further than Kingpin Pizza, 920-265-1900. And by Mr. Reinebo's Cookies, you can not only find them here at Georgie Clark or in the concession stand, I saw they were being sold there tonight. You can also go to Jacob's Meat Market, Jersey Bagel and Deli, Lammers Dairy, The Meat Block, Dwyer's Cheese Hut, and by PRN Home Health and Therapy. Visit prncares.com for more information. They provide home health care and therapy services to patients throughout Wisconsin. And by Forefront Dermatology, voted best in the Valley four years in a row. Check them out for all your skin care needs and by Gallagher's Pizza, Green Bay, De Pere, Alloway, and Swamical. And by the driveway, devoted to helping kids become the best version of themselves on and off the court through old school work ethic and new school methods. And by 
Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing, where they can give you bottled water quality straight from the tap. No hot water, no problem. They can change out that water heater the same day if you got clogged drains, leaky pipes, or remodels. They got you covered. Best price, best service, best choice. And, of course, the Xavier Booster Club, proud supporter of all Xavier High School sports teams and athletes, and they wish the Hawks good luck in tonight's ball game and go Hawks. And we're set for second half action as Seymour going to take this ball out of bounds, midcourt right. Seymour will be going right to left on the YouTube stream. If you haven't subscribed to our Sports Faith YouTube channel, please do so and you'll get notified when we go live with high school basketball. Seymour, they lost by seven the last time these two played and they trail by that same exact number right now starting the second half. Kyler Marks, an eight point first half for him. Averaging a little over 15, leads the team along with rebounds as Marks down on the floor when he got that ball. A near turnover. I would think Seymour may want to look to play it more conservatively here in the second half, and it sure looks like that in the first possession. They do play long possessions generally. The game got a little bit frantic at times. Marks looking for his second three. That one was almost halfway down, and it rolled off. And here come the Hawks. Quimby spinning left of the lane, feeds Hippus. Crawl's going to line up the right wing three. That's long. No. Reed Hippus with a man sized rebound, and then he lost it on the dribble. He knew Shanana came away with it. Now a dangerous pass somehow ends up in the hands of Marks. He's not able to finish, and we've seen some really good looks by both teams not go down this evening. As that was a very difficult pass by Shanana. I don't know how that ball ended up in Marks' hands, but now Crawl. He's deep on his second three in a row. And the second half off to a very cold start. Both these teams struggled in the first half. Three of nine for Xavier from deep. Four of 13 for the Thunder. Here's Fesky gonna power his way against Reed Hippus. Throw it up, not able to finish from four feet. Sam slaloming down the lane, flip it up. Looks like he may have just lost it out of his left hand as he tried to lay it up on the glass. And now Vole's going to try to answer, and boy, it is absolutely ice cold for both teams as we're two minutes in and nobody can find it. A scoreless two minutes. Brightman, dump it, hip miss, lay it up and in. What a feed by Brightman. But a good read by Hippus to find the opening to receive the pass. And now Reed leading the Hawks with 11. Voles lost it. Hippus threw it behind his back to Pfefferly. Sam spinning in the lane. Turn with the right hand. Blocked by Fesky. Brightman picks it up. Fesky with a big time block. But Tyler Brightman, Johnny on the spot. And the Hawks lead by 11, their largest. Little 4 0 mini run here by the Hawks to start the second half. Fesky. One-on-one -on -one with Hippus, gives up his dribble. Getting close to three seconds. Shanana, give it in the corner. Mark's gonna let it fly and he made it. Kyler Marks, I'll tell you what, he's got some shooting range. He is a 31% shooter. 12 of 39 coming in. And you can't leave him alone. It's his second three of the ball game. Now Crawl looking to get into Sam maybe in the post. Now Brightman refeeds Crawl. He's going to try a third three, and that finally finds the bottom. Luke Crawl, his first field goal of the ball game. He comes out, shoots it up there three times, and he makes one. And the Hawks back up 11. Salzman, dangerous pass to Fesky. Power it, back and down, and he somehow flipped it in as him and Reed Hippus are having quite a battle down there, and Fesky has seven, and he's played limited minutes because he had those two early fouls in the first half. Brightman splits out of a double team. Brightman gonna go one-on-one -on -one with Marks, and now he's helped by Vols. Oh, and he finds Luke Crawl in the back door. What teamwork, Brightman. 
He knew somebody was open because he saw two black shirts coming at him, if not three. And he got it to Luke on the backside, and Luke has five points here to kick off the second half. The lead's going back and forth between 9 and 11, and it's currently at 11, and Voles got hit on the arm. Sam Pfefferle is going to pick up that foul, his second. Ethan Voles to the free throw line for a pair. And it is pronounced Volts. 5'10 senior Ethan Volts. Up and good with the first. Carson Johnson back in, as is Sam Geiso. Logan Ramchek will come in and give Hayden Quimby a breather. Good energy off the bench from Ramchek in that first half. He finished with four. And Volts is long on that one, and Breitman with another rebound, and here comes Pfefferle on the push. 40-30, Hawks up 10. Ramchek. There's Crawl off of a double screen. Breitman's going to use a Pfefferle screen and a high-rise triple. Finds a little rain up in the clouds, and it comes down softly into the net. And Breitman has five. Oh, and that ball. Oh, Crawl almost knocked it off of Kinu Shanana. Luke Crawl just ball hawking all the time as he's going to come out. And Isaiah Disjardin is going to come in. The Hawks with their largest lead of the ball game, 13. Danger time right here, I feel, for the Thunder. They need a basket. Plenty of time left, over 13 minutes, but you don't want to fall behind by any more. Almost a near turnover by Johnson there as he almost traveled before he put it to the ground. And actually, that was Geiso. Volts. Throw it inside to Geiso. He wants to back down on Ramchek. Throws it into the corner. Johnson. Cut off by Hippus. Ball almost tipped and stolen by Brightman on the overplay. And now he rejects Marks. And here comes Ramchek. Oh, and a dangerous dribble behind his back. And I think it went off of Ramchek's foot, and it did. That was a good call right there as Ramchek wanted to go into transition, but Kinu Shinana got a piece. And it went off a of Ramchek's heel and a turnover Hawks. Seymour down 13, just Jardins all over Shinana. Oh, what a pass into Marks. Kyler Marks finishes at the rim. He's got 13, but what a look by Shinana. Dish Jardins with a good looking three ball. He splashes it from the right wing and he's got eight. And Bobby Cookton needs a full timeout with 12.24 remaining. On the OSMS scoreboard, it's Xavier 46, Seymour 32. Back with more, you're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Twelve twenty-four remaining on the OSMS scoreboard, and the Hawks have extended to their biggest lead of the ball game, forty-six thirty-two. Want to thank Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Plumbing. Best price, best service, best choice. Nine two zero seven five seven ninety-seven thirty-two, and the Xavier Booster Club, proud supporter of all Xavier High School sports teams and athletes. They wish the Hawks good luck in tonight's game, and go Hawks! Great list of sponsors we have. OSMS, North Star Dental Group. Love our list of sponsors. Great supporters of high school athletics in our community. And now the Thunder in a hole. Down 14, a team that only averages 52. And here's a knockaway. Oh, just Jardins Isaiah with the lively hands on Kinu Shanana. And it went off of just Jardins last. Ball pressure tonight, pretty much the norm for the Hawks. They're all over black shirts everywhere. 
That is no surprise. Geisel. Kyler Marks trying to keep his team in this ball game. He's got 13. Salzman yet to score in this half. He had six at the break. Everywhere there's a white shirt except right there. Brightman got hung up on a screen by Geisel. And Kyler Marks finds the range again. He's got 16. And Brightman lost him for just a second. And now Tyler with a kick out out of a double team. Ole Hafen answers. Luke Olhafen with eight. What a good look by Brightman on that baseline drive. He had two black shirts coming at him again. Here's Desjardins with a steal. Isaiah lay it up. No, but he got bumped. Boy, Isaiah Desjardins, we saw it on the last possession. He almost knocked a ball away for a steal, and this time he does. As Kinu Shanana having some issues with the quickness of Isaiah Desjardins, excuse me, two free throws coming. Shanana with his first, and Desjardins rolls off the first. That's only his fourth free throw attempt of the year. He's made two. Now you got to split a pair to make it a 15 point game, and he does. Isaiah with nine points off the bench. Ethan Volts back in for the Thunder, and Kinu Shanana will take a seat. 11 23 left, second half. Each team only with one team foul. And now Volts trying to work up against Desjardins. And Isaiah, he's causing all kinds of trouble. Volts almost blew out a tire right there. Lost his footing, able to regain. Salzman got tied up, or they're going to get a foul. Oh, boy, good help by Desjardins again on the spin move by Salzman. But they're going to get Isaiah with his second. Looked like he got a lot of orange on that one, but they're going to say he got arm. Isaac Feske now back in. Sam Geiso takes a seat. Seymour down 15, and there's a throw away by Johnson, and here comes Ramchek on a one-on-one against Volts. Lay it up, no, but he got hip-checked to the ground. Nice little steal by Ramchek on the errant pass by Carson Johnson, and off to the race as he went. And Ethan Volts picks up number two, team foul number two. And Ramchek to the charity stripe. Good looking freshman, six foot one. 11 of 13, now 12 of 14 on the year from the stripe for Ramchek. Is Brightman going to come out? As is Brightman and Quimby back on, as is Reed Hippis. And the free throw missed. Battle for a rebound is taken out of there by Ramchek. He just ripped it away from Marks. Feet inside. Hippus goes up with the left hand. No, comes down with it. Just flips it up, falling away. Another offensive rebound. Oh, and Ramchek missed a point blank money. You can't have many better looks than that. And Xavier not able to finish. And the lead is 16. What a takeaway by Ramchek on Kyler Marks. He just went in and stole it. And now a nickel and dimer on the perimeter. A little hand check by Reed Hippus. And it's Reed's first. Three team fouls on the Hawks. Hawks comfortably in front by 16. Marks thought about a three, but good closeout. Now Salzman lines up and hits his first bucket of the second half. He's got nine and all of them from distance. And they're going to need Salzman. They're going to need Marks. And here's a steal. Ramchick threw it to Volts. One-on-one -on -one against Ramchick. He might have got a piece, but Carson Johnson follows up. As Seymour beat the Hawks back down the floor, it turned into basically a three-on-one. And the clean-up bucket by Johnson, and we got an 11-point game. Olhafen, good look and stroke, and he splashed it. His third triple of the ball game, and he has his shooting stroke on target tonight. 12 of 37 coming in, 32%. And he had a couple of big hits now here in the second half. Volts just being hounded by discharges, relentless. And now a loose ball throw away into the backcourt, and it's going to be over and back. And you got to give number four in white the credit on that one as Isaiah Disjardins is just causing absolute chaos on the defensive end. 
Ramp check this. Jardins and Olhafen will go out. It'll be Kroll, Pfefferly, and Brightman back in. Kyler Marks and Ethan Volts out for the Thunder. And Sam Geiso back in along with Colton Neeland. As the Hawks just slowly but surely trying to wear down this shallow bench of the Thunder. They don't go very deep at all. We've seen eight. Now here's Quimby. Four points from Quimby. A couple of field goals in the first half. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities to shoot. And now Xavier in no hurry as we tick down to the nine minute mark. Quimby, there he goes, high rise, three, and he got it. Right on cue, I just talked about him. Took his opportunity there and nailed it. And just like that, Xavier out 17. Hayden Quimby, almost 13 points a game. Ball knocked out of bounds by Quimby. He's a 38% three-point shooter. Had 12 points against Seymour. Coming off a 10-point game, his season high, 18, Quimby. Now a good look, Salzman, they left him, and they got away with it because he left it short. Brightman with the board, here comes Sam. He's got his head up, Sam, what's he gonna do? Spin, whirling dervish, float it right-hander. That was a tough shot. Tough shot, Engel left on that spinning move. And he just left it short. Salzman wanted to go baseline left, closed off, so Geiso has it. Back to Salzman, good looking sophomore shooter. Isaac Feske, freshman, big body. Here's a ball inside, Colton Nealon is doubled and now he's gonna get tied up or not? And there's the whistle and a jump ball. Boy, Sam Freffley and I believe it was Quimby digging away there trying to tie up Nealon, they finally did. And Colton Nealon gonna come out and Kyler Marks a very short breather right back in. 57-40 now. Hawks led by seven at the half, if you're just joining us. This game has been high intensity. At times, both teams have played well. At times, it's been very sloppy. Fafferly, turn with a left shoulder, missed it, put it back up, and he can't get it to go. It's been a tough night for Sam, and now Hippa steals it, and Reed goes into Feske, and Isaac's gonna pick up his Third foul as Reed Hippis gets himself a steal and goes right at Feske. And the Thunder right now really struggling. They average 10 turnovers a game and they are over that. I don't have an official number on turnovers but they are no doubt over 10 as the Thunder have struggled mightily with the basketball, especially against some of the full court pressure they saw in the first half as Hipp is now trying to bury a couple and he does. So Reed with 13. Xavier with some token man to man. Look at Luke Kroll here all over Shanana. Man to man, look at him move his feet. Unbelievable defensive pressure and he takes it away and he's gonna get fouled. And it took away a layup. And that's one time you don't want the foul, but Kinu Shinana is going to pick it up. What a piece of man-to-man -man defense we just saw from Luke Kroll right there. That was a clinic. Oh, and wait a minute. They are going to get Luke Kroll on the foul. I thought it was going to be Shinana. Oh, my. Matt Klarner getting an explanation. I thought the foul was on Shinanu after the steal. Luke Kroll shaking his head like, no way. That was an unbelievable defensive series right there for Luke Kroll. So that's a hard luck fall, his first. As he checks out, along with Tyler Brightman. But you talk about hound the ball handler up top. That was unbelievable. Salzman puts his head down out of a double team. Marks with a fake, pull up 15 footer, airballed it. Salzman had the rebound, now he lost it. It was knocked away by Isaiah Desjardins who's back in. Isaiah Desjardins, I think there's two number fours out there. He's everywhere. Guy's unbelievable with his hands, his defense. Oh, hafen has been feeling it, not that time, wide left. Marks, he's attacked by a couple of Hawks. And I think Isaiah got a lot of arm, and he did. 
Third foul on Desjardins, fifth team foul on the Hawks. Carson Johnson in for Isaac Feske. And Colton Nealon's gonna come in for Xavier Salzman. That's gonna be a short break. As it's gonna be a tough hill to climb right now. 19 point deficit for the Thunder and the clock shows 645. As Ramchek now trying to pick up his defense on Volts. Brightman and Quimby gonna come back here next dead ball. Volts trying to get around Ramchek, skips it to Marks. Good close out by the Hawks. And Hippus is gonna get a foul, and that's an easy call as he reached in on Neeland. Reed Hippus, second foul, and team foul number six. So Brightman and Quimby back in for Pfefferly and Reed Hippus, and it'll be Kinu Shanana back in for Colton. No, excuse me, it's gonna be Sam Geiso taking a seat. 6.29 remaining. Hawks trying to stay undefeated in the Bay Conference. A half game lead over West Appear as Nealon rattles out a three. Trying to get the 13 and one, the Hawks. West Appear, you figure they're gonna go to seven and one. They're at Green Bay East. You expect them to win that game. So it will be a half game lead if Xavier can hold on there or here and Brightman misses the three short. The reminder, we'll be back on a week from tonight. We'll be right back here against Manasha as Chinana off left on the three. Here comes Hayden Quimby on the push. Ahead to discharge and feed Brightman, and he's going to be hand-checked a little bit too aggressively by Kyler Marks. That's only his first. Actually, make it number two. I missed one earlier. Marks has two fouls. He's going to come out. And Fesky's going to come in, the freshman. 5.41 left. Seymour, 16 points only since the halftime break. Quimby catch and fire out of the left corner. No, just Jardins around the back save. Quimby's going to get another try and it's short. No, Brightman off the ricochet. Oh, he throws it up and missed it. Quimby with a couple of looks out of the corner and then Brightman could not finish on the putback. Here's Johnson now, guarded by Olhafen. Olhafen, good show on defense there as Nealon thought about maybe going down the lane. There's a good two-man game. Nealon inside, missed it, got his own one. Dribble reverse, hit the underside of the rim. Here come the Hawks, it's a four on three. Quimby spinning, no call, they let it go, and he banks it up and in. Thought they might call a charge as the defender, I think it was Volts. Went to his backside, but I think it was a good no call, and Quimby took advantage. And the Hawks extend to 21. Biggest lead of the game. Isaiah Discharns almost got another loose ball. Down to 4.35 remaining. Chinana pull up in the lane, five footer, and he got the shooter's roll. Chinana with five points. 61-42, Hawks. Xavier gonna play pretty free right now with the 19 point lead, long on the three ramp check. Chinana has a rebound between his legs twice. <laughs> Having some trouble with it and Bobby Cook, they're gonna take another timeout. It is a full timeout on the OSMS scoreboard. We're gonna keep it right here, 61-42. The Hawks in the lead. And we want to thank some fine sponsors tonight. Mr. Reinebo's Cookie is established in 2014 by Matt Reinebo and Ellen Amick. They are selling them tonight in the concession stand, and you can also get them at the Summer Farmers Markets in Appleton or Jacob's Meat Market, Jersey Bagel and Deli, Lammers Dairy, The Meat Block, and Dwyer's Cheese Hut. And by Ash Wabinum Bowling Alley, the Family Fun Center, 2929 Allied Street in De Pere. PRN, Home Health and Therapy, where they provide home health care and therapy services to patients throughout Wisconsin. They provide quality and compassionate care to all the patients they see, treating them like their own family. Visit prncares.com for more information and by Forefront Dermatology, voted best in the Valley four years in a row 
Check them out today. Appleton, Kakana, New London, and Nita, Nina, excuse me, for all your skin care needs. And by Gallagher's Pizza of Green Bay, De Pere, Alloway, and Suomico. And the driveway, 1220 Flightway Drive. And by Jeff's Water Conditioning and Greenville Palming. Best price, best service, best choice. Hawks just trying to melt this one away, 61-42. A seven point lead at the half, nice look inside by Geisel. Salzman couldn't handle it very well, otherwise he might have had a layup. Marks closed off by Brightman, Geisel with a strong, oh, a hard drive, but he overlaid it. Here's a feed, Pfefferly finds Brightman, beautiful hanging pass, Kroll, and he got hacked. Big time transition there by the Hawks. As Brightman took it from Sam and then he found Kroll cutting to the rim. Beautiful sharing of the basketball. Kroll will go to the line for two. 341 left and Luke is up and wide left. The Hawks were six of 12 in the first half. They are four of seven in the second. And Luke, that one was well wide left as well, so he misses a pair. In a close game, those could be harmful. In this game, not so much. When you're up by 19, but you still want to make them. It's a confidence thing, right? Fesky got it from Shinanu that time, who was having trouble. And now Fesky rumbling to the rim and Olhafen with a block from behind as the Seymour fans said, hey, wait a minute here. We thought he got hit on the arm, but they say no, a block by Olhafen out of bounds. And now Geiso looking, finally gets it in. Shinanu spinning three out of the corner, no. And let's see if Quimby wants to run or is he gonna pull it out? Hayden taking his time. Now into the lane, got to the rim, floating right-handed layup, he's not able to get it. Brightman almost was able to tie up Marks, but Kyler rips it away. Thunder down 19. We've been stuck on 61-42 for a bit. Left-handed in the lane. Fesky, no. Olhafen offered that, or altered that, I should say. And right now, it's getting a little ragged here in these final three minutes. What a no-looker to a cutting Olhafen. And that's why Sam Pfefferly does what he does. He leads the Bay Conference in assists. Just over six a contest. And that was a beautiful no look. And now we have an off ball fall. I think they're going to get Crow on the hold. And I think, I think Luke might have just got a warning. Yeah. I think he might have got a warning there, but he did get called for a push, and now oh, the Xavier bench asking what? I think I got he got a delay a game warning, I believe the bench was just notified, so I think he slapped the ball away after the foul call is what it was. So Kinu Shinana, or excuse me, Xavier Salzman to the free throw line, and it's a one and one, and he got the first. Cole Hippus checks into the ball game for the Hawks. Salzman up and good with a pair and he's got 11. But the Hawks are on cruise control up 19. Luke Kroll, he thought about pulling it. He came out hot in the second half. He scored five early points, his only five. Now Cole Hippus here. 6'2", junior. Getting a few more minutes tonight. Joe Gallucci out with the injury. And Luke Olhafen continues to light the lamp. His fourth deep ball. And that shooting stroke is pure tonight. 32% coming in. And that one's going to bump up just a little bit. And that's going to be an offensive foul as Kinu Shinana got a little frustrated as Luke Kroll was all over him. And he took his left arm and just shoved off Kroll. And that was about the easiest call you'll ever see in a basketball game. But, boy, Luke Kroll, he, is, he has been uh, the defensive MVP of the ball game. And 
Maybe he's the guy we talked to on our post-game show. We shall see. Take your pick tonight. It could be just about anybody. I got a feeling it could be number 24, Luke Olhafen. What a game he's had. 16. Backdoor cutting feed to Hippus from Olhafen, and Cole's going to go to the line. As Olhafen now a season high, a new one. He had 13 previously against Valders, but you can scratch that one off. He has 16 tonight. As Cole Hippus up and good with the first of two. And it's going to be Jonah Gentry, the 5'10 junior, and he's going to come in and relieve Sam Pfefferly. As the Hawks now lead by their largest margin of the evening, 23. We'll be back on the air a week from tonight. And then a week from Thursday night, it's going to be West up here in Torchy Clark Gym as Hippus misses that second free throw. But the Thunder knock it out of bounds, so it'll be Hawks basketball with a minute 39 remaining. Good, solid performance here for the Hawks. Michael Potter into the basketball game as well, the 5'10 sophomore. Now they're going to run a little motion here, obviously, second string for the most part here. Ole Hafen, your only regular player on the floor for the most part. He's going to try to get it. He got it. Boy, Luke Olhafen checked for a heartbeat because he's unconscious. He's got 19. And I think Bobby Kukta is going to take a full timeout. And I think he's about ready to clear the bench. And we're going to step aside with a minute 16 remaining. It's all Xavier, 70-44 on the OSMS scoreboard. Back with more. You're watching Hawks Basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. And back inside Xavier High School, Torchy Clark Gym as we have substitutions. Michael Kippenhahn is going to make an appearance, the senior. And we got substitutions for Seymour as well. Number 30, Owen Adamski into the ball game. Here's Carson Johnson who's played some significant minutes this evening. And Carter Gesse right here into the ball game, a 6-1 sophomore, and Jonah Gentry is going to pick up a foul on a reach in backcourt, and it is one and one the rest of the way for both teams. Carter Gesse to the free throw line. So we talked about Seymour coming in here, winners of six of the last seven. As Gessie misses the front end. They've been playing very well, but they cannot match the Hawks tonight as Ramchek lost that ball. Gessie, I think, got a reach in piece of it. And now we're inside of 45 seconds. And the Hawks will win comfortably as Colton Nealon moved his pivot foot. So the turnover number is definitely going to be a statistic that Coach Kukta will look at. And no doubt that contributed to a lot of the issues here tonight as they're down 26. And just some very hot shooting at times. Luke Olhafen, we mentioned him. Five three-point buckets in the game. Out of the corner, Kippenhahn airballed it. Cole Hippus with a tough rebound. Tried to get it back to Kippenhahn. But the ball goes through his hands and stolen by Gesse. Now Geiso turned with a right hand and he shot it long from about three feet. And that kind of sums up the night as Xavier going to dribble this clock out. And Xavier holds it and does not shoot. 
And that's exactly what you do when you're up 26. You dribble it out, and that's what the Hawks do. And on the OSMS scoreboard, we have gone final. Xavier 70 and Seymour 44. Let's step aside. We'll come back, and we'll do a wrap-up, and hopefully we'll get a Xavier Hawk up here to talk to. And we'll do all that after this timeout as the Xavier Hawks get it done tonight. 70-44 is your final on the OSMS scoreboard. Back with more. You're watching Hawks basketball on Sports Faith YouTube. Located in Ashwaubenon, just south of Green Bay, our 60-lane bowling center is your home for family fun and entertainment in Northeast Wisconsin. With 60 lanes to choose from, we offer open bowling at day, and Cosmic by Night. Our center also features a brand new interactive way to approach the game, Unreal Bowling. Get more involved with the community by joining one of our leagues. And for our younger bowlers, join our youth bowling program where you can receive one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're looking for a place to host your next special event, the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley has two different banquet rooms that can accommodate large groups upwards of 250 people or comfortably seat 80 people. Come for the bowling, stay for the food. Our Fieldhouse Bar and Grill is home to delicious drinks, pizza, sandwiches, and so much more. The Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley is the place to make lasting memories with family and friends. For more information, Visit us at ashbowl.com or by calling us at 920-336-0400. Hungry? Check out this deal on the best pizza in Wisconsin. I love this pizza. And you'll love getting $5 off any Gallagher's Pizza order of 30 or more. And it's all you can eat at our lunch buffets at any of our four locations. You're faced with a tough healthcare decision. You've been given a diagnosis and treatment options, but you're still not comfortable with the plan. It may be time to get another opinion. I'm Dr. Jason Klein, orthopedic surgeon and physician owner at OSMS. No matter what you're questioning, a second opinion can give you peace of mind. OSMS is doctor owned and patient focused, and we're here to help you understand your options so you can stay in charge of your health. Learn more at askforosms.com. Fresh for Poots and Diamonds of Gold present Let Me Be Frank's Silver Jubilee season at the Meyer Theater. And our first show of the year is Two and a Half Belgians, Friday, February 2nd through February 27th. Join me, Two and a Half, and my other brothers, Run True Five, as we work at the Frosty Tip in Dykesville and cruise for Illinois babes in Fish Creek. It's the late 60s. Herky and Mabel are the, the proprietors of Frosty Tip. Two and a Half Belgians runs February 2nd through February 27th. For tickets, go to MeyerTeater.org or call 494-3401. Who would you rather face? A 240 pound football player running at you full speed or a dentist? Let Dr. Pete and the team at North Star Dental make your experience worry free. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete Haley from North Star Dental Group and our patient's safety and comfort come first. That's why we offer sedation dentistry. No stress, no worries. Go home with that beautiful smile, usually in just one visit. If you think that's too good to be true, give us a call. North Star Dental, changing your life by changing your smile. And welcome back to Torchy Clark Gymnasium and the Xavier Hawks get it done tonight. 70-44 is your final score here. And let's take a look at final statistics. First for the Seymour Thunder. And they were led by their leading scorer, Kyler Marks. Marks finishes with 16 points, 11 from Xavier Salzman, 7 from Isaac Feske, 5 from Kinu Shinana, 3 
from Ethan Voltz and two from Carson Johnson for their four, 44 points, and they averaged 52 coming into this basketball game. And for the Xavier Hawks, what a game for Luke Olhafen, a season and career high this evening. He finishes the game with 19 five three-point buckets for Luke Olhafen. He had his absolute shooting stroke spot on tonight. And just a good, solid overall team effort. Reed Hippus, nine of his 13 in the first half. Nine points each from Hayden Quimby and Isaiah Disjardins. Disjardins with a fabulous defensive game this evening. Five points each from Luke Kroll, Tyler Brightman, and Logan Ramchek. Three from Sam Pfefferly. Good floor game. Not a great offensive night for him shooting the ball, but he dished out a good number of assists as he came in leading the Bay Conference in assists and closing out the scoring for the Hawks. Cole Hippus with some extended minutes this evening. He finished with two, and that is your total of 70 points for the Hawks. The Hawks shot 22 free throws in this ball game, and they ended up making only 11. So that's an area that's always a concern when you don't make a lot of them, but 11 of 22 from the three-point line. Seven, eight three-point buckets in the second half for the Hawks. They finished with 11 from beyond the arc. So they got the shot going in this basketball game, especially in the second half. And just taking a look at some team statistics for the game, three-point shooting, Xavier was 11 of 25, Seymour 7 of 22. And rebounding the basketball, it was Xavier, which was a concern coming in. Seymour a pretty good rebounding team, but the Hawks got him in the paint tonight. 39-28 was the final tally in rebounding and the big statistic of the night, 35 bench points out of the Xavier Hawks, only two for the Seymour Thunder, which was Carson Johnson. So 35 to two, a monster advantage from the Hawks in this basketball game. Taking a look at some individual rebound numbers as well. Tyler Brightman had those five points, but he had nine rebounds to go along with those five points. Reed Hippus, five rebounds tonight, four rebounds each. Sam Pfefferly, Logan Ramchek, and Luke Olhafen. So as we talked about on the glass, the Hawks did a pretty nice job in that department. Kyler Marks, on the other hand, seven rebounds for him, and Isaac Feske, with another double-digit rebound performance against Xavier, had 11 the first time they met. He finishes with 10 rebounds to go along with his seven points in this Seymour loss. And the Thunder now fall to four and four in the Bay Conference. And they fall to eight and six overall. And the Hawks, they moved to 13 and one overall and 7-0 and in the Bay Conference. We'll be back here a week from tonight. It'll be the Manesha Blue Jays. And then a week from Thursday night is another big one. It'll be the West of Pier Phantoms coming into Torchy Clark, and that is going to be potentially the game of the year in the Bay Conference, and we'll have it for you right here on Sports Faith YouTube. Please subscribe if you have not done so already to our Sports Faith YouTube channel. We appreciate everybody tuning in this evening. A very impressive performance put in by the Xavier Hawks. And just looking out over the floor here to see if we're going to have a post-game interview. And I do not see anybody heading up this way. Thought we might get maybe a Luke Olhafen, who had a 16-point, or excuse me, 19-point career-high game tonight. And Reed Hippus played very well. Also 13 points, and we mentioned uh, Hayden Quimby and Isaiah Disjardins, nine points for each of those ball players. So, yeah, very good performance tonight. Got a little bit of help from just about everybody. They all pitched in 
Nine players in the scoring column tonight for the Hawks, and everybody got on the floor as there was a little bit of garbage time here at the end of this ball game. But that is going to do it from Torchy Clark Gym at Xavier High School tonight. Your final once again, Xavier 70, Seymour 44. We'll talk to you a week from tonight. It'll be Manasha and Xavier. And until then, have a great rest of the week, everybody. And we'll talk to you next. Actually, our next broadcast is going to be Friday night. It'll be Kakana and Nina. So keep that one in mind if you want to follow some FBA action. We'll be on Friday night from the new Nina High School Gymnasium. And then, of course, Tuesday we'll be right back here against Menasha. So that'll do it. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you Friday night. Hawks win it. 70-44, your final. Good night, everybody.